huge book, and uh, it's been touted as one of the best biographies, so I'm really anxious to read about that also. Because now that I have Darwin's letters, now I want to read what his biographers said about him. And it's always good to learn about the good men of the earth. I mean, Charles Darwin, whether you like him or not, is one of the absolute greatest scientists ever. So, it does you good to at least understand first before you dismiss. Well, Dawkins has something to say that I absolutely agree with. And I, I believe it's important to understand how he puts this and what he says. Because this, this is my thinking as a believer in evolution as well as being religious. I really do believe in God, but I really do believe in evolution. And I know there's people who are shaking their head and they're saying, what an utter idiot. You're so irrational. Because the, the two are diametric opposites. They are dichotomies. You, they are opposites. You cannot believe in both. Sure I can. It's based on your assumptions. Now, now in light of that, and, and two books, two really important books that I've found that have helped me understand a little bit different perspective, a broader perspective, a deeper perspective, a different view that I actually think makes pretty good sense, are Kenneth Miller's Finding Darwin's God. He has changed my perception, both of evolution and religion, of the idea that God very well could be using evolution as a continuous creation tool. Now see, the ancient Jews, the Jews are very good on this. They say, God didn't just create once in the past and was done with it. Just once. Divine fiat. Boom. God spoke and that's it. Creation occurred. Nothing's changed ever since. This has been the creation. No. They say God is continually creating all the time. It's an ongoing process, not just a one-time event that happened long ago. Now, I really like that. Our, our, our uh, not Doctrine and Covenants, well, probably in the Doctrine and Covenants, but the uh, Pearl of Great Prize, the Book of Moses. Worlds come and worlds go. You know, our space telescope has shown us all these magnificent visions of the universe out there, the utter magnificence. <laughs> it, it, it just numbs you. It, it's fabulous. You must start looking at those pictures that the Space Telescope has shown us about this astonishing universe we're in. Because it's evolving. It's alive. It's moving. There are things happening all the time. They have found places where stars are being born. They have found places where there are black holes. They have found supernova where stars die. It is an evolving, ongoing process. I think the Jews are very good on that. Well, Dawkins, very good, showing that evolution is one of God's tools. It is one of his ways. I personally like that. I understand there's contradictions. Oh, that's idiotic. You don't understand the full implications of your belief. I may very well not. In fact, I'll be the first to admit that. I really don't. But that's okay with me. I don't have to have all of the contradictions ironed out first before I believe, I wouldn't believe a thing. <laughs> it's okay to live by faith, in my opinion. I don't have to say that the necessary conclusion of evolution is to force us into being intellectually satisfied atheists. I don't go that route. I believe in God, and I also believe in evolution. The other person... Michael Dowd, I can't say enough good about this. Thank God for evolution, and I do. Really, he's serious. It's not just a smart aleck title to try to sneak satanic, evil, godless materialism in under the rug. No. No, his universal assumption, his universal picture is really impressive. We really are star stuff. Everything on this earth, from the metal of my pickup, from the very metal that my pickup is made from, from the metal in this camera, to the hairs on my head, to the bones in my body, to the rocks I see out here on this landscape, even to this stuff, even to this stuff. 
Oh crud. It's awful hard. Ah, this stuff. Dirt. Dirt. Beautiful, wonderful dirt. Evolution's helped me appreciate that. We are stars. We are the substance of the universe. We are the star stuff. The interesting thing is, we can now contemplate the very universe with which we have come out of. <laughs> which we are a part of. It's a, it's a fascinating subject. Dowd is very good on that. He, he's, uh, he's helping me appreciate my perspective. And I'll, get, uh, I'll, I'll do more videos on Dowd. But right now I want to concentrate on Dawkins because he is such an enemy to the evangelical Christians. That's unnecessary. Yeah, I know. He brings it on himself. He, he shoots himself in the foot, in my opinion, on that. His science is pretty good, though. He says, Darwin... Darwin was less, and this is on page 8 of uh, his book, A Devil's Chaplain. I highly recommend the book. And now remember, you don't have to accept all his conclusions, but at least understand the man. At least understand what he's saying and what, what evidences and ideas he brings forth. That's imperative. Dawkins says, Darwin was less than half-joking when he coined the phrase, Devil's Chaplain in a letter to his friend Hooker in 1856. Here's what Darwin said. He said, What a book a devil's chaplain might write on the clumsy, wasteful, blundering, low, and horribly cruel works of nature. And his observations through the eons, <laughs> through the decades that he was alive, showed that nature really is quite clumsy. There's a lot of bad design in nature. And that's, uh, that, that's part of uh, Biggerson's Saving Darwin. That's part of his conclusion about the problem with the intelligent design, is they will tout the excellent design, but they completely ignore all of the bad design. And how could an omnipotent God produce something so clumsy and lousy from an engineering perspective? They distort the idea of design as being the main uh, aspect of deity, and, and, and it's not. There, there's much more important things than that. But anyway, on page 10, now, now here's what Dawkins says, and, and I have to say a hearty amen to this. This is very good. Really, truly, seriously. Just bear with me. Understand. I'm not about to turn you into atheists, I promise. I didn't. He hasn't convinced me atheism is the way to go, so I'm not going to convince you either. You know better than that. I prefer to stand up with Julian's refreshingly belligerent grandfather, T.H. Huxley. <laughs> uh, he's fun to read, too. Agree that natural selection is the dominant force in biological evolution, unlike Shaw. I'm willing to admit its unpleasantness, unlike Julian, and unlike Wells. Fight against it as a human being. Here is T.H. Huxley in his Romaine's lecture in Oxford in 1893 on ethics and evolution, or evolution and ethics. Let us understand once for all that the ethical progress of society depends not on imitating the cosmic process, still less in running away from it, but in combating it. Now, now understand this. This is G.C. Williams' recommendation today, and it is mine also. I hear the bleak sermon of the devil's chaplain as a call to arms. As an academic scientist, I am a passionate Darwinian, believing that natural selection is, if not the only driving force in evolution, certainly the only known force capable of producing the illusion of purpose, which so strikes all who contemplate nature. But at at the same time, as I support Darwinianism as a scientist, I am a passionate anti-Darwinian when it comes to politics and how we should conduct our human affairs. Now get this, you say, wait a minute. Dawkins is an anti-Darwinian? Yes, in this respect. We alone on earth can rebel against the tyranny of the selfish genes. <laughs>